The Galaxy S22 series launch may be one of the most important Galaxy S launches in a long time. And that's because Samsung isn't just launching a couple of new phones this time. Instead, they are merging two of their most popular smartphone lines into one. For starters, there are three phones launching this year. The Galaxy S22, Galaxy S22 Plus, and Galaxy S22 Ultra. All three smartphones have top-of-the-line internals, with the main star being the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor at its heart. And yes, we're finally getting a proper Galaxy S flagship with a Snapdragon processor, something we haven't seen in a long time. You also get 8 gigs of RAM with up to 256 gigs of storage for the Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus, while the Ultra variant gets up to 12 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. In Malaysia, however, Samsung says that uh, storage will top out at 512 gigs instead. From here, the smartphones start to differ quite a bit, especially when it comes to the Galaxy S22 Ultra. I mean, just look at it. It, it, it looks so different compared to the other two. Gone are the rounded corners and super curvy nature of the Galaxy S's design language and in its place is a smartphone that looks a lot like a Galaxy Note 20 Ultra with a new coat of paint and some updated specs. Then there's the elephant in the room which is the inclusion of an S Pen and a silo built directly into the device. This new S Pen apparently has the lowest latency of any S Pen since, though using it, I couldn't really tell the difference. Up front, the S22 Ultra gets a massive 6.8-inch QHD Plus curved Dynamic AMOLED 2X display with a 120Hz refresh rate. Unsurprisingly, it is gorgeous and sharp and pretty much everything you'd love about a flagship Samsung AMOLED panel. Keeping the lights on is a 5,000 mAh battery, which is good to see despite the extra space taken up by the S Pen's silo. This phone also supports 45W fast wired charging and 15W fast wireless charging, though neither charging brick is included in the box. But while the Galaxy S22 Ultra definitely looks more like, you know, it should be a Note device, the Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus, they retain a lot of the Galaxy S's design language, but with a few updates. Unlike the Ultra, the smaller S22 Duo's frame is much flatter on the sides, which to me gives it a little more grip in the hand. And since Samsung wasn't going all out with curving either the back or front glass, you're getting a much more pronounced frame here. The good news is that these phones still feel as premium as ever, and there really isn't much separating the S22 from the S22 Plus because, you know, they're both running glass backs now. And I gotta say, the glossy armor aluminum frame, I think it makes the metal feel more metal-y and more premium as a result, which is really nice. The biggest difference between the two would be the size of the screen. The S22 featuring a 6.1 inch full HD plus dynamic AMOLED 2X display, while the S22 Plus kicks things up to 6.6 .6 inches instead. Oh, that and the fact that the S22's uh, 3700 milliamp hour battery only supports 25 watt fast charging, while the S22 Plus's 4500 milliamp hour battery will support up to 45 watt fast charging. With the specs out of the way, let's talk about the new cameras. Naturally, you'd find a more capable quad camera system on the S22 Ultra with a 108 megapixel wide camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and two 10 megapixel telephoto cameras. On the other hand, the S22 and S22 Plus feature triple camera systems with a 50 megapixel wide, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and 10 megapixel telephoto camera. Despite the difference in hardware though, apparently the idea behind the cameras for these smartphones was the same, and that is to take incredible photos and videos in low light, or as Samsung calls it, nitography. <laughs> the bad news is I only got to spend like about a hot minute with either device, so you know, there wasn't a whole lot of scenarios that I could take photos in, uh, but from what I saw um, after using the cameras, it was enough to get me excited to want one of these phones to do a camera comparison. What was particularly impressive to me was the color reproduction. Where previous Galaxy S low light photos looked a little bit washed out, this one seems to do a really good job. It struggles a little with dynamic range, but the vibrance I was getting from the photos were very impressive. 
That being said, there is a small caveat here. Uh, Samsung Malaysia did not allow us to copy any of the photos that we took from the smartphones out and bring back with us to take a look at like, you know, on a proper monitor. So the, the, while the photos look really good at the event, I can't really say for sure if it's because the new camera is really good or if the new smartphones just have really good screens. So, you know, for like the final judgment, I'll have to wait for a review unit before I make a decision. Now, if you started watching this video wondering whether, you know, Samsung actually combined the Galaxy S line and the Galaxy Note line together, the answer to that question is yes. But if you are also wondering whether they did it the right way, well, I'd probably say no. Don't get me wrong, from what I can tell, these are perfectly good smartphones that will undoubtedly be one of the best practical flagships the market will see this year. And I'm particularly excited for that small S22 in green. But at the same time, I also think that Samsung combined the two lines in probably the most boring way that they could. I mean, just look at the S22 Ultra. It can just as easily be called the Note 20 Ultra or something along those lines, you know? And as someone who's followed tech for some time now, this merging of streams is a big moment. And I think Samsung should have taken their time to produce something truly unique and revamp their whole flagship smartphone lineup. I don't know, like maybe have a new design that sort of pays homage to the Galaxy Note design language while also retaining some of the curvy aesthetics of the Galaxy S, you know. That, that, that would have been cool. But no, instead what they did was basically replace the Galaxy S Ultra with what could have easily been like a Galaxy Note Ultra. And that to me is what I'd call a wasted opportunity. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. For now, uh, we don't have details on the pricing. What do you think of these new smartphones? Are you excited for the S Pen's big return? And also, what do you think? Should we have gotten Exynos 2200 or are you happy with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1? Let me know all those thoughts in the comment section below uh, and I will see you in the next video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm Rory and uh, I'll sign off now. Bye-bye.